back now, though, on the gasoline front. It's time now for some off-the-road driving. Almost every day we hear of some new imported model that's designed to seriously challenge another segment of the domestic auto industry. In recent years, more often than not, news of that sort has sent chills up the corporate spines in Detroit. But there's one area that hasn't been successfully bridged by the imports. That's the true off-road market. On most backwood trails, you're still most likely to find only one four-wheel inhabitant, the American Motors Jeep. If you ever wonder why the post office uses so many Jeeps for their rural routes, it's because no other vehicle can provide better insurance that their do-or-die motto will never be breached. The Jeep is the closest thing to a motorized mountain goat or mudslinger that you can buy. With high ground clearance and when-you-want-it four-wheel drive, we found little terrain that couldn't be easily dispatched. And when you finally return to blacktop civilization, the Jeep can get you back to that tackle shop or 9 a.m. corporate meeting without a pause. But be warned, it's not recommended that you leave your Jeep in the four-wheel drive mode for extended highway driving unless the roads are slippery or snow-covered. Getting a Jeep into or out of four-wheel drive is a two-step process that hasn't changed much over the years. First, you have to turn the front wheel hubs on each side by hand from the two-wheel drive notation to four-wheel drive. This locks the hubs into the forward differential. The next step is to move the special shift lever, which controls the power transfer case, to one of two four-wheel drive positions. You have to do this while going very slowly, and it takes a little muscle. There's a low range for extra traction at low speeds and a normal four-wheel drive position for routine off-road operation. What we've said so far goes for most any traditional Jeep, including our test rig, a $10,500 CJ7 Renegade. The Renegade offers a bit more in the way of special trim and paint than the base model. The CJ7 is about 9 inches longer than its CJ5 cousin and 2 feet shorter than the Scrambler truck body version. All models come with either soft or hard tops. You should only remove the soft top when it's dry but the process is reasonably simple. First, the doors are removed by simply pulling upright. Then you unfasten all the snaps and straps, and from the front, fold the top back onto itself, and then off. If you stow the top while you're in the field, you may find one of your passengers has no place to sit, as all of the small rear seat storage room is taken. But at least you'll have plenty of air, as the windshield will also fold flat on the hood. Getting into a Jeep requires loose trousers. The first step is quite a ways off the ground. Instruments are still basic Jeep, with all gauges present in a center dash location. In the CJ7, you have a choice of transmissions, either a four or five speed manual or a three speed automatic. Under the hood, you'll find a 2.5 liter four cylinder made by Pontiac or this AMC 4.2 liter straight six. Despite being high off the ground, routine service should be simple. More importantly, most trouble-prone items should be fixable in the field. Jeeps are made for off-road use. That means highway driving is somewhat harsh but tolerable. In other ways, though, the Jeep can hold its own. In our passing acceleration test from 40 to 55, 7.4 seconds compares well to slower passenger cars. Over the 500-foot stoplight to stoplight course, we got a time of 10 seconds and a speed of 50 miles per hour. That rates in the fair category. The best our CJ7 would do in a turning diameter was a wide 37 feet. However, the very quick power steering means that even the hardest maneuvers will be pretty easy. The reason we're not disappointed in such a wide turning circle is that you don't want to steer a Jeep too sharp too quickly. The high ground clearance makes for a high center of gravity. It's a little too easy to push this Jeep too far and send it spilling over onto its very sturdy roll bar. So it's important to remember why Jeeps are built the way they are. Building in greater amounts of roll protection would probably mean either less ground clearance or unbearably harsh suspensions. Despite that disclaimer, we were able to exit our low speed handling course only slightly under the 35 entry speed with only modest trepidation. Highway braking, on the other hand, was performed quite well. From 30 miles per hour, average stops of 38 feet are within the normally good range for all vehicles. 
From 55 miles per hour, this renegade again stopped in a good average of 132 feet. Though quite a bit of fade was apparent, and pedal pressure was reaching the He-Man level. The front disc did tend to lock before the rear drums. That produced some back wheel hop as the rear wheels tried to keep going while the rest of the Jeep stood still. Since most Jeeps these days see more highways than byways, fuel economy is important. The EPA rates this CJ7 at 18 city and 27 highway. Surprisingly high numbers for a utility vehicle. During our standard city highway mileage loop, a combined figure of 20 was recorded. Jeeps have helped small American Motors Corporation through some tough financial times, as the desire for roughing it still attracts even the most sophisticated city dweller. And despite a lot of effort to make it more civilized, it's all the more refreshing to find that a Jeep is still a Jeep and remains king of the off-road domain.